What's up YouTube? I'm Guy and today we are going to do a review of a watch that is quite new to me, not only the specific model, but also the brand. A viewer of mine sent me a message, oh, last week I guess it was, and said, hey, I have this watch that I'm considering selling and I thought maybe you'd like to review it before I let it go. That watch is the Mido Ocean Star, reference number, and it's a long one, M026.430.17.1. I've had this watch here for a couple of days now and have had a chance to spend some time with it. And considering that I really have no familiarity with this watch going into this review, I'm really surprised that this hasn't been on my radar before. I'm really impressed with this watch so far. It is not a particularly expensive watch. MSRP on it is a little bit high in my opinion of $890 according to the Mito website, but in looking around online, I'm finding this watch available in the $535 to $550 price range, and at that price, I think it's pretty reasonable. It compares very favorably to a watch that I reviewed recently, the Hamilton Khaki Navy Scuba, and you would probably expect that because it's in a very similar tier to that watch. And Mito is also owned by the Swatch Group, which of course Hamilton is as well. So this watch, it does again compare very favorably to that Hamilton Khaki Navy Scuba that I reviewed, maybe a little bit better if I'm being honest. And it's more or less in that same price tier of just over $500. And I think it's probably worth every penny if I'm being perfectly honest. Before we dive over to the tabletop and take a close look at this watch, I'll give you some basic information about it and uh, get that out of the way up front. For the measurements on this watch, we have a case diameter of 42.5 millimeters and we have a lug width of 22 millimeters. So those two measurements are going to probably be a little bit larger than what I would prefer if I'm being perfectly honest and upfront. Uh, but it's not bad for most people. I just like a little bit smaller generally. The thickness comes in at a pretty slim 11.75 millimeters or 11 and three quarter millimeters. That's a pretty low profile watch, particularly for a diver watch. And the lug to lug from top of the case to bottom of the case from extremity to extremity or what I like to call the watch's wingspan, I get a measurement of 49 millimeters. So overall, a fairly good sized watch, if not bordering on slightly big, in my opinion. I know for most people that uh, these dimensions are going to be perfectly acceptable. You'd be more than happy with those dimensions. It's pretty typical other than maybe the thinness for most dive watches. So, uh, you know, take my opinion there with a grain of salt. I do favor a little bit smaller and I'll set some other very familiar watches I'm sure you guys will be familiar with side by side with this once we get into the tabletop so you can kind of see how does it compare to some other well-known watches. The other basic specifications about this watch or the main features that it has, 200 meter water resist, it does have a screw down crown, sapphire double AR coated crystal, some people like double AR coating and some people don't, I will say right up front though. Uh, super, super legible because of that double AR coating. It does come on a, a rubber strap, which is very nice, and it has an adjustable on the fly adjustment clasp, which we'll see up close here in a few minutes. It is quite excellent though. We do, of course, have a unidirectional bezel, but it's only 60 click. Not a big deal for me, but I know some of you guys prefer a 120 click unidirectional bezel. We have the day and date complication. We have a really attractive blue loom, which I'll show you a uh, loom shot here in the future. And uh, that loom is, of course, on the dial and the handset. And uh, it features the Mito Caliber 80 movement. A little bit of information about that movement. Basically, it's pretty much the Powermatic 80. It's a movement that Hamilton uses called the H10 or the H20, depending on which model we're talking about. Uh, Powermatic 80 is found in the Tissot. In the Mito watches, it's apparently called the Caliber 80. From what I can tell, it's all basically the same. It's an 80 hour power reserve Swiss movement that runs at a beat rate of 21,600 vibrations per hour. Seems to be a pretty good quality movement and in all of the watches that I've had it or something similar to it, I have had no complaints. I've always been fairly impressed with it. 
As I previously mentioned, this viewer that loaned it to me is going to be selling this watch. If it's something that you might be interested in, feel free to email me at justbluefish at gmail.com and I'll get you in touch with him. Of course, this only applies to you if you've seen this video sometime probably in January of 2018. If you happen to see this review months and months down the road, odds are going to be pretty good that he's already sold it. But keep that in mind that uh, this watch is for sale and I'll be more than happy to get you in touch with the viewer that's loaning it to me if you'd like to talk to him about it. We're gonna dive over to the tabletop view. I'm gonna take a closer look at this watch. I'm gonna show you all of those features up close and give you a better look at everything. And yeah, then we will close out this video with my final thoughts. As I had mentioned in the intro, the overall size on this watch, 42 and millimeter case diameter with 22 millimeter lugs, 11.75 millimeters thick with a edge to edge or wingspan at 49 millimeters brings it into a size that is pretty typical of dive watches to be completely frank. I find it to be a little large, it wears a little large and the main reason that I say that is because there's a lot of dial here. The dial compared to, you know, not similar necessarily priced watches, but similar sized or maybe slightly larger, or slightly smaller. The dial on this watch here does kind of overwhelm a little bit and it makes it feel even larger than the 42 and a half millimeters might suggest. I'll show some watches side by side so you can get a feel for what I'm talking about here in a little bit. But first things first, what I really want to talk about are the case, the bezel, the crown, crystal, the dial handsets, the strap and clasp, and we'll also take a look at the loom on this guy. To start with, the case is really, really well done. I'm always impressed with cases in the more affordable, almost entry level, maybe not technically entry level at $500 plus, but definitely in the affordable bracket that comes out of watches from the Swatch Group. If we look up nice and close here, overall the case has a very, very attractive, nice satiny brushed finish, almost the entire case, with the exceptions of the tops of the lugs. And if I can get in here nice and close, give you a look at that. There's this little chamfered edge on the lugs on the top of the case that kind of gets larger and larger as it goes down towards the tips of the lugs. It's the only really polished part on this case, but man, it, it really does set it off just right. It's very attractive. It looks great. And, you know, the, the quality of the finishing is right up there with just about anything else that I've reviewed, to be completely honest. The rest of the case itself it does have somewhat thin lugs that taper down off of the body of the case and over at the three o'clock side surrounding the crown we have some again sort of thin tapering crown guards but overall this all works very well there's certainly nothing to complain about when we talk about the case finish the case quality the design the aesthetic it's all right there other than again with the exception of it being just a little bit big in my opinion the next thing that we'll cover here is going to be the bezel this is maybe something that I could complain about. It is only a 60 click bezel, and that's not a big deal for me. I don't mind 60 click unidirectional bezels. The problem is that the action on the bezel, it's not outstanding, it's just so-so. And to be perfectly honest, at this sub $500 price point, it's a little bit uncommon to find watches that have really, really excellent bezel action anyway. But it's very kind of deliberate firm clicks although not overly stiff and, you know, it just doesn't have that, like, uh, I don't know, buttery smooth be bezel action that you might be hoping for in a dive watch. That said, the material, I believe it's just an aluminum insert, but it's got a very nice matte black finish. It's not overly reflective. I like that a lot. The printing of the numerals as well as the graduations on the bezel, it all looks very good. I'll try to get in here nice and close and give you a good picture of that if I can get the camera to focus. Um, yeah, there's nothing really to complain about there. There is a pip of loom at the 12 o'clock and of course it's pointed over at the 9 right now. Uh, it's a square instead of a more traditional triangle. I don't know that it's necessarily something that I would complain about, just a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing. Uh, but the blue loom on this, including the pip there at the uh, 12 o'clock position, and we'll go ahead and spin the bezel back around to the 12 o'clock position, uh, very nicely done. Uh, the other thing about the bezel, it's a very low profile, and the overall, the whole case is low profile. Again, 11.75 millimeters from top to bottom with a very flat case back, and this very low profile and somewhat uh, domed, I guess, maybe would be the right way, or angled downward sloping bezel, keeps it all very low. But again, because of that 
very low profile bezel and the not really excellent action. It's not hard to manipulate because it's not overly tight, but it's just, you know, you don't get a very good purchase on it. I could see maybe for an actual diving tool that might be a little undesirable. For the rest of us though, the 99% of us that 99% of us that don't go diving, that will never use this as a true tool watch, it's probably more than adequate. Uh, everything else about the bezel though, you know, it's it's right there. It's it's decent quality, nothing to really complain about other than those little tiny points. Case back, I'll give you a quick look at that. Uh, it's a screw in as opposed to a screw down case back. Uh, nicely decorated, I guess, if you like this little starfish or sea star motif. And of course, this is called the Mido Ocean Star, so I guess it makes sense. Not like we're ever really going to spend a lot of time looking at that case back, but you know, there it is. And I suppose you might prefer an actual screw down case back, but this is a 200 meter water resist watch, so I suspect that the screw in case back with those uh, one, two, three, four, five screws is you know more than adequate to meet the needs of its water resistance rating. Getting back over to the dial side of things, the crown is the next thing that we'll talk about. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit closer to give you a better look at that crown and to talk about it. The crown does have a polished end which is signed Mito and it is a screw down crown but as you can probably see there the I don't know what we would call this texturing, the knurling, it's not very well defined and it's also polished, so it makes it a little bit slick, meaning it's slightly difficult to manipulate. It's not impossible, and I'm obviously going to demonstrate it here. It's just a small crown with slick, uh, very mild texturing or knurling, so manipulating the crown is a slight, slight problem. Again, it works. You know, you can see I'm getting it unscrewed here. It's not a big deal. But if I had my way, I would probably either make the crown just a little bit taller or give it some more aggressive serrations or knurling or texturing to make it a little bit easier to manipulate. Once we get the crown out to the first position, it's the hand wind position, and of course hand winding this movement, which is more or less a variation of an ETA movement, this caliber 80 movement, it's basically what you would expect, works perfectly fine, has a nice feel to it, nothing uh, super high quality about it, but certainly nothing bad about it either. Pulling the crown out to the first position, or maybe this would be considered the second position, is our quick date and day set. Since we're at 4 o'clock here, it's safe to go ahead and change it. Turning it clockwise changes the date. Turning it counterclockwise changes the day. There is dual languages on the day wheel, so as you can see, every other step on that day wheel is the English language. Pulling the crown out to the third position, of course, it's going to hack the movement, as you can see the heck it's seconds, hand stops winding, and we can set the time to whatever we'd like. In this case, let's just pretend it's 6 o'clock on Saturday the 6th. Go ahead, re-push in that crown, starts the movement back up. Putting a little bit of downward pressure and spinning the crown clockwise lets us screw it back down. Again, because it's so slick and small, just a little bit more difficult than I would like, but it's certainly not a big problem. After the crown, I do want to talk about the crystal. Again, this is a double AR coated crystal, and man, there is very little reflection. Of course, you're seeing some right there as I point it directly at the lens of my camera, but, I mean, that's pointing directly at my studio lights, and you would not be able to read the majority of watches if I was pointing it like this towards the studio lights. It would just be solid white, and uh, as you can see, it's still pretty legible right there. I mean, very legible if I'm being perfectly honest. When you're pointing it in a direction that's not going straight into the light, you know, perfectly legible. The matte dial is uh, very, very inky black, so you know there's no haziness because of a, of a glare in the crystal or anything like that. The crystal is basically flat, as you can see there, no dome or anything else to cause distortion. And uh, yeah, overall, I like it quite a bit. It looks excellent. The dial and handset on this watch looks excellent. Again, we got this nice inky black matte dial with the Mito automatic branding up at the 12 o'clock position and Ocean Star Caliber 80 down at the 6 o'clock position. Just below that, down at the very bottom, we can see it says Swiss made. All of the markers on this dial are nice applied markers, and I'll get in here nice and close, see if we can get a good look at those without too much glare from my lights because they're a high polished applied marker. It's probably not showing up perfectly. And then each of the markers is filled with this blue luminescent material. I don't know if it's 
uh, luminova, super, super luminova, or, or what, but a very nice blue color. I'll roll in some loom footage in a few minutes here. The handset is a nice stainless steel handset with a little bit of skeletonized portions on maybe half of the handset, and then the end is loom filled. It is a shape that I'm not exactly sure how you would describe. It's almost squared off, but then at the very ends, we have a little bit of a beveled edge on the left and right sides. Uh, very nice handset. The second hand comes out to almost a spear-like tip, which is highlighted in orange and matches that caliber 80 text down at the 6 o'clock side. Very nice. Over at the 3 o'clock side, of course, we have the day and the date. It's black background or black date wheel and day wheel with white text. Very, very nicely added. It doesn't stand out so much as to be distracting. It's not on there as though if it were, I don't know, an afterthought. Uh, very, you know, very well implemented. There's no framing or highlighting around that day and date window. Nothing to distract. It's there. It's functional and purposeful without being something that jumps out at you and gets in the way of the legibility of the rest of the watch. I think that's well done. The markers, so that you can keep your orientation if you were in the dark, have double squares up at the 12 o'clock side, down at the 6 o'clock side, single squares over at 3 and 9, and then these rectangular markers at all of the other uh, hour indices, or uh, hour marks, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, overall, the whole layout is very clean, it's very aesthetically balanced, even with this day and date complication over at the three o'clock side, it doesn't feel like it's heavy to the right side because it's sort of understated and subdued there with the white text and the black dial and no obnoxious framing or anything. So yeah, overall, a very nicely done dial, very nicely done handset. Again, I probably mentioned it a little bit earlier, but the only complaint I have about this dial is that it's very big. It's, it's a lot of dial, and I'm gonna bring in, again, some comparison watches to explain what I mean by that. Before I do that though, I will bring in some loom video so you can see this really attractive blue loom. It's very comparable to my Rolex Submariner, that same or very similar color. I don't know if I'd say it's quite as bright. I can't tell you if it's as long lasting because I haven't had enough time with this watch to really evaluate it like that, but it is very attractive and it's very well done. I do like the blue loom that they're using here, whatever it's called. Again, I don't know the trade name of it, but yeah, definitely a plus for this watch. If you want something a little different than that standard green Luminova or Seiko Lumabrite style loom, the last thing to talk about on this watch is the strap, and this is one of the highlights of the watch. You have this nice black rubber, rubber strap on a Mito signed stainless steel clasp. The clasp is dual button deployment. It has a very nice high quality machined swing arm, and the clasp itself is also high quality. The blades of the swing arms are not that cheap sort of thin stamped metal. You know, it's just a really well done, really well done clasp, really well done swing arm. Now, the highlight of this clasp is that once you have it on the wrist, you can push these other two buttons and expand it, push the buttons again to bring it in. I believe there's five levels of adjustability here, so you can bring it out in probably two or three millimeter increments, I'm not exactly sure, all the way out to the fully extended position, or bring it back in. The strap itself is this nice, not overly pliable, but certainly not stiff rubber, it's comfortable. It is of high quality. I have no complaints whatsoever about the quality of the rubber. In general, I don't wear watches on rubber, but more of a stylistic choice than a, an issue with the material itself. I have worn this on the wrist for a little bit, and I find it to be very comfortable because it's lightweight and because it's low profile, and uh, yeah, just it works very well. There's not really any significant texturing on the inside of the rubber, and you can see it does have these lines here but it's not something that feels aggressive, so it's not gonna get annoying on the wrist over the course of days and days of wearing it. There's these lines in the strap here you can probably see, so you can trim it to size and then install the uh, clasp as needed, of course. I wanna take a quick look at a couple of other watches next to the Midos Ocean Star to compare the size of the watch. Because like I said, while this Mito is 42 and a half millimeters in case diameter, it kind of wears a little bit big because it has a very large dial. So we have a Seiko SKX on the left and a Rolex Mariner in the middle to compare for size purposes only. We'll go ahead and take a look at the 
Seiko SKX first. And these watches, diameter-wise, are more or less the same. I think the Seiko might technically be slightly larger. But I don't know, to me, if we look at them side by side, that Mido presents bigger because it has so much dial. It's just a little bit overwhelming in the size of the dial, in my opinion. I don't know to you guys, if that looks like it's much bigger, let me know what you think in the comments below. But I find that the Mido presents significantly better than the Seiko, even though I believe the Seiko is around 42 to 43 millimeters as well, as memory serves. Now if we look at it side by side with the Rolex Submariner, we can see that it's significantly larger than the Rolex. And yeah, the Rolex is a 40 millimeter case diameter, but everybody complains that the Rolex wears large because of its super case with these big lugs. But side by side, this Mido, I mean, it doesn't quite dwarf the Rolex, but it is significantly larger than the Rolex. And it really presents that way because, again, of this oversized dial. One thing I will point out while we're looking at this is you can see how much more legible that Mido is in this bright studio lighting next to that Rolex. The double AR coated crystal really makes a big difference. That Rolex is bordering on illegible to me in this video, uh, whereas the Mido is perfect. But yeah, size wise, it does present pretty big. And I think it's because it has a very large dial. It almost. Uh, borders on overwhelms, you know, overwhelming to the to the size of the case. Now, if you like a watch that wears big, that presents big, this Mito is going to be great for you. But if you want something that feels like a 42 millimeter watch, I think that this Mito probably feels more like a 43 or 44 millimeter watch, if I'm being honest. So the final thoughts on the Mito Ocean Star. Right off the bat, I'm a pretty big fan of it, honestly. I, again, didn't know anything about this brand coming into this review, and I enjoyed seeing both the watch and learning a little bit about it. It's a brand that's probably not extremely popular in the United States. I don't know if they're just not advertising here very much or what, but I know that uh, overseas, I think in Europe, it is a bit more popular, and it's, again, definitely a very quality watch. Some of my likes and dislikes. Well, likes, number one, legibility. With that double AR coated crystal, with that clean black dial, and that really attractive blue loom, overall the legibility on this watch is outstanding. It is really very good. Uh, I found that to be very, very impressive, and that's probably one of the big takeaways that I'm going to have with this watch in this review. My next like is going to be comfort, and it's sort of a double-edged sword, and I'll explain that when I talk about my dislikes. But as far as comfort goes, the size, it's very low profile. It's very down low to the wrist, and that's a big plus for people that are going to be wearing this watch, you know, to the office or at work. Maybe you're wearing a long sleeve or jackets, to, especially at this time of year in January. It's quite cold all over the country right now. Very low profile, very comfortable. Pair that up with that excellent rubber strap that also has the quick fly adjustable clasp and you're really having a watch on the wrist that you hardly even notice considering you know it's it's a dive watch it's a little bit bulky uh weight wise it's really not all that heavy i want to say it comes in at about 130 grams double check my notes here uh 132 grams uh on this rubber bracelet so yeah it's it's, it's low profile, it's lightweight, it's very, very comfortable, and that's something else that I really like about this watch. Fit and finish is also excellent, and if you're familiar with my Hamilton reviews, I've always said that I thought the case quality and the finishing, particularly the brushing done by Hamilton, is very good, and being a brand under the Swatch umbrella, no surprise, Mito also has excellent case finishing and overall quality. That was another really impressive feature about this watch and I give it, you know, big stars for that. Some of my dislikes, and there's really not very many, but the crown is not done very well. It's very small. It doesn't have very good texturing. It's a little bit difficult to manipulate. I had that same complaint on the Hamilton khaki navy scuba dive watch. Just not really well implemented. Not terrible. It's not unusable, but just a little bit small and a little bit difficult to manipulate. Another dislike for me is the bezel, and not everything about the bezel, just a few little things. Number one, it's only 60 click, and the action is not very well refined. It's not sloppy per se, but just, again, not super well refined. 
It's a very low profile bezel, it's very thin, and I would imagine that while this one doesn't have this issue, I could, I could see where if we got an example with a little bit of a tight bezel, it would be particularly difficult to manipulate and to use. So I think that the bezel could be done a little bit better. The insert material though, and the overall aesthetic, the look and the style, it's quite good. So it's not a total fail by any stretch of the, of the imagination. But yeah, if I had something that I could maybe fix or change a little bit, I might look at that bezel as one of the first places. Well, that's basically it, guys. That's my review on the Mido Ocean Star reference M026.430.17.051.00. It's a pretty nice watch, and at the just over $500 price point, I think it's a decent value. Certainly compares very favorably to other um, to other watches in that price bracket that I've had some time and reviewed in the past. I would highly recommend it. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Please like, share comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. As usual, I always appreciate all of the feedback that I get from you guys. We'll be back later on in this week, maybe early next week, depending on my time availability with another review video. Take care now. Bye.